<laughs> the wheel, baby. Denzel Washington training day. Denzel Washington, yep. Yeah. Can you see it there? Yeah. 4506 is LAPD favorites at the time. Actually, still pretty favorite with some guys in LAPD. Yeah, they're in yeah. the vintage retro scene. Yeah. Cool guns. You, missed, you needed one in case one died or whatever, and needed his backup. By the way, you'll notice threaded muzzles. Yeah, threaded muzzles. For the end search for the blanks. It, yeah, right there. Yeah, we do a lot of things stereotypically in Hollywood, and if we're showing an old timer from LAPD, he's going to get a 4506. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Those were also used uh, in the Shield Michael Chiklis. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, brother. These actually go for big bucks out here, right? Yeah, these are do they? Yeah, they right. One time, this was an issue gun at my agency. Everybody loved it. Ghost in the Shell, Scarlett Johansson. Ghost in the Shell, Scarlett Johansson. The tag it first so you can see what it is. Yeah. And that is a modified shirt. Glock, I would. Yep, that's exactly it. Glock 17. And that was filmed in New Zealand. So, oh. Yeah. Wow. We, we do a lot of exports. Um, not as many as we used to, but we still do uh, temporary Yeah, and then what kind of lead time do you need for that? Is that quite a while? Uh, it, 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 the whole process, we say, takes 12 weeks, but it really is dependent upon how fast the, Im the importing import permits come in from whatever country it's going to. The U.S. State Department can turn it around. Uh, best case, four weeks. Worst case, eight weeks, depending on the country it's going to. So I have a very special one down here that I promised to show a buddy of mine. This thing's been used on several films, but most recently, Rampage, Dwayne Johnson. Rampage, Dwayne Johnson. It is the Milkor grenade launcher. Yeah. And that was standing by, Eric. <laughs> yeah. You didn't need to tell us or remind us. What else has this been in? Oh boy, uh, it, we got them initially for Transformers and some other things. Actually, that particular model uh, we initially got for a, uh, it was a uh, TV series, like Top Shot or something. I can't remember exactly, but it was a reality-based TV series. Cool, and that's one of those Hensel. Which optic is this? Is that the optic that comes with it? It's the optic that comes yeah, with it. Okay. I don't, I'm not sure who makes it. Oh, yeah, see, I just got your, yeah, the ranging. Ranging capability. That's pretty cool. And those things are pretty damn accurate, too. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. The core grenade launcher. <clears throat> Another 1911 Springfield. This is from Black Panther. All right. With the mock up Knights can. Yep. And those were the, you know, I mean, those cans were very popular back in the day. Now we got a lot more, you know, at our disposable. But before we were just taking aluminum bar stock and turning it and, yeah, you know. Doing, yeah, now this was basically what they called a Marine Corps operator for a while, remember? Yep. And then your idea to get this gun came from where, Carl? Uh, from you. <laughs> class with me and Ken, correct? Yeah, yeah, your guys' 1911 class. Um... It's a it's a great gun for the for the price. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. Agreed. Absolutely. Cool really gun. You need nothing you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. for the money, it's a good gun. So we got a single action here. Yeah. Now somebody wanted about Western guns. Somebody asked about Western guns. Here you go. And this is from the ridiculous six Blake <laughs> Shelton. <laughs> yeah. So you know we like Blake Shelton. We like country Western music. You know, and uh, comedies. And so basically a mock-up of a single action army, probably a, what is it an Italian gun? I believe it's a Cimarron, yeah. Cimarron? Italian. Yeah. yeah. With kind of an unusual barrel length. Yes, it it's is. A Cimarron, yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there was two of those for the film. Again, we don't do anything uh, in singles. Um, that's just one. I noticed two. in your Western stuff, most all your single action and Winchester are all replaced with for TV purpose with the Italian copies now. Yeah, yeah. Um, we sold a, I'm probably a hundred Winchesters back in the day. And there were too much. For Same with the copies. Colts. Yeah, yeah. yeah there just were too much for using. I them. wish we had all the Colts and Winchesters we once had. Yeah, so do, so do we. Now, recent movie. Just this is a pretty recent yeah. play. Yes, and a very good one. This is Hostiles. Christian Bale. 
Yeah. And as the cavalry officer, this is a replica of an of a 1873 7 inch Marshall E. Mark single action army, which is what he would have been issued at that time. And it's a good copy, by the way, if you look at it. They, they did a good job of mocking it up. Is that a Cimarron or is that a. Uh, is I believe we got those. A birdie. Uh, birdie, 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 but if yeah. you look at it, well done as far as a mock up of a um, U.S. Army issued gun at the time. Does it have the cartridge on the stocks, Larry? Can you see? No, it doesn't. On not. the other side, possibly? Anyway, looks looks real real similar. Very cool. Cool gun. And and it's, it's a pretty, it's good, pretty movie. good movie. Yeah, I haven't pretty, seen it. Pretty good movie. Check yeah. it out. If you're a Western fan, not bad. We're continuing on with Western guns. That's Jamie Foxx from Django. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie Foxx from Django Unchained. This is where he says, oh, it pulls a little bit to the left, right? Is this the one where he goes, I don't know if that's goes, the one. Oh, I hate that in mind. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, we and had two or three different models for him and... Uh, that's that's one of them, and that's the black powder version. Yeah, cool. And this is it's a short copy of a. Of a it's Rick, a Cimarron. Remington, yeah, yeah Cimarron. Yeah. So this one's kind of cool. This is uh, Expendables, and that's a Stallone gun. Expendables, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, a little movie background on that. As you can see, the uh, the uh, hammer's been modified for, fan for fanning. Yeah, initially one of our gunsmiths took the back of a spoon and welded a spoon on there, and we oh, yeah. still have that gun back here. Cool. Um, and of course, a ported the barrel, ported barrel compensator. Yeah. For those, all those uh, guys that like compensated nine millimeters, that that'll be right up their alley, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I, funny thing about that, it, it, Sly had his input on everything, and that gun was, it, it's exactly the way he wanted it. Initially, these were cut at an angle, he didn't like and, that. and he had cut himself, oh, so, oh, <laughs> so we had to switch it up, yeah. Oh. Um, you know, just a little bit of behind-the-scenes movie stuff. Yeah, cool. All right. Oh, okay, a little bit more modern now. Okay. Yes. For, this is for the millennials in the crowd. Yes, this is Will Smith's Zeb. Zeb, Zeb yeah. excuse me, Zeb yeah. custom Glock from the Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I like to give credit where credit's due. Charlie Taylor up in Canada, uh, movie armaments, movie arms management, or movie armaments, I believe. Uh, they did most of the filming of that movie. Uh, we just did a very because they filmed it like in Toronto, right? Yeah. 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 And we did just a few weeks down here. We had to duplicate the guns that he built up there in like three weeks. We had oh, boy. It was crazy. Um, it had to do with actor availability. So did he, Zeb well, do the gun for you guys? Zeb did the gun for us. Well, he did a nice job. Yeah. 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 Very cool. So, but, you know, the actor was down here for some other project, and they still had filming to get done, so they brought yeah. the whole production down here. Yeah. Wow. Suicide Squad. This is Margot Robbie. And this is one of those, um, what's rhinos. this called? Rhinos. The, the rhino? Chiapa, yeah. Yep, Chiapa Rhino. The 60DS, I think. Yeah. Yeah, where the barrel's down at the bottom. The theory is, I guess, lower bore line gives it more control. Have you ever shot one? No. Maybe you're not missing a thing. <laughs> you ever seen the Mataba? I've seen them, yeah, I've handled them. Yeah, we've got them never, here, too. That's did? one of those weird ones, too. But isn't this kind of a Mataba-ish type it, They look similar, yeah, but that's the semi-auto revolver. It's oh, yeah, of, that's right. Yeah, the yeah. Matabas, is, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Thanks. I mean, from a photo standpoint, or from a movie standpoint, it obviously looks like a... You can imagine why it's desirable. Sure. Yeah, it looks really unusual. And the reason is because it is. Yeah, bingo. So here's your, uh, here's your Mataba. I can't, the grips were mocked up for something, and the, the wood grips on these crack and break, but just to give you kind of an idea, oh, that's, yeah. that's how this thing works. Now, this hadn't been in a movie yet? No, it's been in quite a few things. Oh, really? It's just, uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what. Wow. Nothing major. Have you shot one of these? No. I never have either. First time I've seen one. I've heard of him. I remember Reed Knight one time years ago when I was down visiting him. He had just got one. They're still made, aren't they? Uh, there was only a set number. I want to say 1,600 rings a bell. There wasn't that many of those imported. We had to pay a premium for those bad boys. Uh, we have six of them. They were expensive, weren't they? Yeah, they were very expensive. 
Cool. Here's another cool 1911. That's from uh, Punisher. Punisher. Oops, we flipped over. Oh, Punisher. Kind of reminded her back in the early Ipsy Cure. Remember yeah, that big time. That style of. And remember, supported by the rod, kind of yep. like our old buddy uh, Steve Nastoff. Steve Nastoff, like exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody was asking about Punisher guns earlier. I remember in the feed there. Here you yeah. go. So there you go. That's from the uh, Thomas Jane movie. Yeah, Thomas Jane. And that gun was built from scratch here in house by one of our gunsmiths, Scott Fritchler. Uh, Scott used to work for Packmeyer back in the day doing oh, cool. customer and government models. Yeah. Cool. So he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now all the blanks you guys, do you guys load all of them in-house? or We do. Of, okay. We do. We have our own uh, company called High Desert Theatrical Blanks. Cool. We have so we have a hundred pistol here. Aaron, thank you for here, showing us is, these uh, wonderful pieces of history. You're welcome, South brother. South African creation there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, when you talk to the guys down in South Africa, they consider this the gun to be the one that put Vector out of business. Did you know that? I did not. This was a train wreck. They consider it like they had to recall on them. Yeah, there was a big recall. They This is the gun that was kind of the nail in the vector coffin. Mm -hmm. We like them because they look sci-fi. Yes, yeah, right, sci-fi, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, but yeah, you're right. Um, they tried to kind of basically take the P7 retarded gas system and make it work for them and, and the polymer frame, and it didn't work out real well. Now, what has this been in? Uh, it's it, it, well, the gun's been in quite a few things, um, but since we painted it white, we kind of just left it as a movie gun. We did about a dozen of those for the security force for Hunger Games. Hunger Games, okay. We got a P90 here. Yeah, and this is full auto, I would assume. Yeah, so we've had those things painted white for the Hunger Games. We also had the F2000s painted white, um, red for for the series. Uh, they've been silver and gold and. You know, we've had them just about every color for different things. Now, this one's, this one's you guys converted it to full auto? Uh, yeah. yeah, that one yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, the PS90. Yeah, we've got uh, pretty much every P90 in-house is in painted right. red for that series right now. Now, what's so. the name of the series again? Uh, Westworld. Well, oh, got it. Yeah, you know, it's a remake of the old Yule Brenner, but it's a lot different. Mm -hmm. It has quite a following, by the way. It does. Yeah. Yeah, it's on HBO, I think. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But the caliber that is the ballistic equivalent to 22 Winchester oh, Magnum. Yeah, FN 5.7 round, in case you didn't know that. Yeah. So this is kind of cool. It's a, I call it a double Desert Eagle, but it's not. It's a Beretta. Wow. Yeah. It's a Beretta, but mocked up as a double barrel Desert, desert Eagle. Yep. In case you, you can see the Beretta slide in the middle there. Wow. Now, what was this from? Uh, Green Hornet. Oh, yeah. Chris Bale, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Christoph Waltz. Christoph Waltz, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cool thing about that, Larry, is we incorporated the decock on top here, too, oh, for yeah. safety. Yeah. Would you guys build this in-house? Yeah. That's pretty neat. Wow, cool. Dual, double, double, dual <laughs> desert eagle. Yeah, this one we haven't seen before. This is the the spirit. The spirit. Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. Five hundred Smith and Wesson. And that one looks cool, really cool from the front. Oh yeah. Looks like a big oversized. Also, the uh, cylinder has been sleeved. That's not. Factory. Yeah, so this is like a sleeve deal here. You can see they've put the sleeves on it. And then you put so, the additional notches. There, yeah, there's a few locking bolts on there. <laughs> and a couple, yeah. Wow. It's got a oh. unique sight arrangement there, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> of course, when you're shooting blanks, it's not real critical. Not really, man. It's That's all about cool. look and style. I mean, it looks good, yeah. you know. You'll do right. That's why we're here. To shoot good, you got to look good, right? Yeah, exactly. That's why we're here. We're yeah. here about. Wow. That wasn't using all of the movies. I think it was just one or two, but it's one of Dwayne Johnson's guns. Ah, Dwayne Johnson, Fast and Furious. Got one of the Performance Center Smith uh, 629 that were set up as a kind of as a hunting gun. Mm -hmm. 629-3. Yeah. Performer Center did those things. Oh, yeah. You could add weights in here yeah. under there to kind of get the weight balance you wanted. Obviously, it was primarily set up for optic, yeah. and optic, yeah. But a unique looking gun, probably 
very movie world. So we've got, we got a couple of Heath Ledger guns here from uh, Batman. Oh, okay. Uh, Good old H70 Whippet. Yeah, yep. from the Dark Knight. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. And Larry, you'll like this one. Yeah. <laughs> Smith and Wesson 76 from The Dark Knight. Yeah. Might as well. Basically, an American made Swedish K. Yes, sir. And from what I've been told, the when the Swedes got wind of what the U.S. US was doing in Vietnam with the Swedish K. And for clandestine work, they refused to sell them. So the agency went to Smith & Wesson and said, can you make us an equivalent gun? And they shrank it down. Mm. Literally, this is not a bad gun. I've the problem that. was to reduce the mass, they increased the cycle rate. Cycle rate faster. And the beauty of the Swedish K was, it was kind of like a 10 gun, bub, bub, bub. When you boosted the cycle rate 250 rounds, now you got a gun that, quite honestly, on full auto wasn't very controllable. But it did have a setting for a semi. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, if you guys know anybody that has those Swedish cake kits too, I'm looking for a few of those. I've got one at home. Actually. Do you? Yeah, I do. Cool. I'll, dig, I'll dig it out, but I've got one. Right on. I can just hook you up. You know, these are cool A lot of police departments bought them back in the 60s and early 70s, but it kind of died. Demand dropped off the submachine guns and they just died off. Yeah. I mean, was there much use of it in Vietnam? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. Um, rare. Posty. I mean, it's a rare. I mean, yeah, I actually, be pre even in the class three yeah. world, you don't see them see all that often, and they were fairly inexpensive at the time. At the time, yeah, yeah. yeah I think we got eight of them. Yeah. Cool. 